and put this right over here because the FBI says this is a hate symbol. Betsy Ross flag. There we go. They can hate it right there. Hey guys, my name is Jared. This is Guns and Gadgets. And on this channel, I bring you Second Amendment news every single day, no matter where it happens. Good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. From legislation to litigation and everything in between. And now I want to tell you about something that happened yesterday in the United States Senate. In the Committee on the Judiciary, which is chaired by Senator Dick Durbin, who is, um, what's the term, an ass clown, um, they, they started this hearing with a big sob story, and it's, they're, they're trying to make gun violence a health epidemic. I'll tell you why in a moment. But first, I want to show you the opening statements of this hearing, as well as the the PLOM, P-L-O-M, poor little old me, the uh, the little video snippet that tugged at all the heartstrings and was full with lies. Stand by, watch this video, count the lies, and then in the comment section, list them out. This, that'll be the fun game. Here we go. The hearing on the gun violence epidemic, a public health crisis, is today's topic. The committee will hear from public health experts who've been on the front lines of gun violence epidemic. They understand the pain of a loved one whose family member has been taken away too soon by the pull of a trigger, and they've seen the aftermath of bullets tearing through bone like it's tissue paper. In cities like Chicago, dealing with the constant drumbeat of gun violence has turned these public health professionals into battlefield experts. Chicago faces the same challenges as many other cities and towns. In fact, many rural areas have even higher rates of gun violence than the urban areas. Across the country, gun violence is a public health epidemic, plain and simple. In 2022, there were more than 48,000 firearm-related deaths in the United States. That's 132 Americans every day dying from gun violence. More than half of firearm-related deaths were suicides. More than four out of 10 were homicides. And guns are now the number one cause of death among America's children and teenagers. Not auto accidents, not cancer, guns. I'm gonna share a video that shows the devastation left in the wake of gun violence and provides a glimpse into heroic efforts to heal communities and prevent future violence. I'm going to warn the audience that the video is disturbing and may be upsetting to some if they wish to avert their eyes. Please play the video. Foundations, community organizations, and corporations have all stepped up to support initiatives that holistically address the root causes of this cycle of violence. I think reframing this as a public health crisis, you know, I'm an infectious disease specialist. Many of people in my field have actually turned to gun violence, recognizing that gun violence behaves like an infectious disease. It is contagious. Violence is passed on from person to person. All right. Uh, so what did you guys think about that little video made by Dick Durbin's staff. Well, I think it's absolute horse shit. Um, and my, sorry, I didn't mute my phone, but we're just gonna keep rolling. Uh, it's absolute horse shit that a US Senator would perpetrate lies. Uh, there were a lot of lies in there. Uh, the one that you've been seeing for almost two full years now, as they're pushing toward the election cycle for many, uh, is that guns are the number one killer of children. It is an absolute lie. You can head over to Dr. John Lott's research, 
where he exposes it all. It's only, only if you include 18, 19, and 20 year olds as children, which we never have ever in this country for anything. We send those people to war for the country, right? We put them in all kinds of contracts. Legally, they can do all kinds of things. They can start businesses. They can uh, accumulate debt. They can do a lot of things in this country, which would say that they're not children unless you need statistics to work for you, which is what the anti-gunners have resorted to for the, uh, forever. The next thing is uh, <laughs> the lady at the end, the infect infectious disease specialist that uh, gun violence is it's catchy, right? It's uh, it's gonna jump from one person to the to the next. Well, my previous career, for 24 years, I investigated violent crime. For 24 years, I was around some of the worst in the country. Yet I've never perpetrated a violent crime on anybody, uh, and that goes for all of us. So normally, I would have uh, broadcast this this meeting live, but I was able to get a little bit of ahead, uh, some information ahead of time of what it was going to be, and it's basically just a begging party. See, what they're doing is they're looking to figure out how to dole out the one half billion dollars that was put aside for community type programs from the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. You know, the one where the Republicans uh, joined the anti-gunners to sell out the Constitution? Yeah, that in, in both chambers? Yeah, that, that one. Yeah, half a billion dollars. And it was a bunch of groups, like hospital groups, uh, neighborhood groups, saying, oh, give us the money, give us the money. And some of the things that they talked about were these community programs. And one thing that I thought was funny is how uh, one lady, I don't remember her name, because it doesn't really matter, she's just full of shit. Um, <laughs> she was saying, like, oh, all this money, we should start all these programs. And when we find out one that works, that's the one we'll implement everywhere. So just throw money at programs that you know won't work until maybe one does uh, work with one person or two people, and then we'll just funnel money through that. We'll just launder money there. It's absolutely insane, but I'm bringing this to you for a reason, because you're about to be bombarded with this on a national scale. You have re-elections taking place. You also have uh, the, the installed leader, Joe Biden, the person running his campaign has already said on record that Joe Biden is looking to finish the job on guns. Um, he really has no power to do anything. In fact, all the things he has done is just tweak rules, which he couldn't do. Uh, the ATF is acting unconstitutionally. They're getting smacked down every step of the way. And I'm not following any of it. And I hope you're not either. Because the one thing that reigns supreme is the United States Constitution. The Democrats will throw it in your face every time you do a you you pass a law in any state, see Missouri, see Texas, which protects the Second Amendment. Those are, whoa, 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 whoa. The, we have the supremacy clause. Well, we have it too. The supremacy clause of the U.S. Constitution says that a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people—that's me, you, us—the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So any infringement is unconstitutional. That's how I'm rolling. Guys and gals, I shared a meme uh, on my social media earlier, and uh, I want to put it here. Because I think it speaks volumes. Tell me if you are on the same team with this one. I was once willing to give my life for what I believed this country stood for. Today, I would give my life to protect my family from what this country has become. Guys, sound off down below. Let me know what you think about this. Uh, if you really want to watch the two hours of uh, absolute, complete, sniveling BS, I'll have a link down below. Subscribe to the channel if you think more people should be aware of what they're trying to do to our rights, the ones that they didn't give us, but they think they can take. Be safe, stay vigilant, carry a gun to keep you, your friends, your family, your community safe. Guys and gals, we're going to need to fight. We're going to need to fight in several different arenas, and hopefully fighting in these arenas prevent fighting in the real one. I'll see you all in the next one. Take care.